Namaskar, friends. With the with the infinite grace of uh, Lord Ganesh Ji and the blessings of uh, Hanuman Ji Maharaj, I am going to start this uh, show today, uh, episode number four. So uh, let me share with you the screen so that you can I can uh, uh, make some. Uh, some sense in what I am talking to you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, okay. I will just. So, today's episode will be uh, uh, number four, and the topic is why inner and outer kumbhak. So, what is kumbhak is means when you inhale and you hold or exhale and hold why is that why is it so important in normal breathing when when we do shwasayam like just do the in, just do the inhale exhale inhale exhale and but we don't stop at the kumbhak we never never stop at kumbhak in the kumbhak is that uh, hold holding part is absolutely minuscule very few femtoseconds only so that is not very healthy breathing so that's what we will be talking about today. In episode one, we discussed and established that Hanumanji is our breath, right? In the episode two, we discussed how to read Hanuman Chalisa. What are what is the so what are the matras? The four matras inhale, four matras hold, and four matras exhale, and four matras hold. That is the one which that is how we have learned how to read Hanuman Chalisa. Remember, not chant, read Hanuman Chalisa. And in the third episode, we learned how to synchronize our breath when we read and listen and breathe the Chalisa way. So we did that. So uh, the Chalisa breathing is as you have you have already seen it in in the uh, second episode that you you do the inhalation first of all the lung is empty then you do the inhalation. Let me get the point. So you do the inhalation and fill your lungs with air, right? At this point, there is a retention, which is called antar kumbhak or inner kumbhak, you call it, right? You fill. So this is the actual doorway to consciousness. They, they say, na, Ram duare tum rakhare. This is Hanumanji. This is Hanumanji. And this is the doorway he is guiding. He is guarding this doorway what is which doorway? Doorway to Ram, right? Ram is what? Consciousness, okay? And then you exhale and hold. So these two places where the holding is happening is the real power of our breath, actually. This is where creativity and everything else happen. We can do outer things as well as inner things, inner strengthening. How does that happen? I'll share with you. So what good is living long life and being sick or infirm. That's what Hanuman Chalisa does in enhance your life. They, they, it is it is clear cut because what happens is we are breathing less per minute. So instead of 16 breaths or 20 breaths per minute, you are breathing two breaths per minute. So you have extending life and, pe and it has been scientifically shown that there is an increase in telomerase length. Of, of the chromosome and th that is the determining factor for whether the cells will continue to multiply or they will collapse and die. Now, Tulsi Jaji gives us uh, an assurance that you will live long, healthy and without any affliction. And that's why he says, Na se rog hare, na se rog hare sab pira. This is what he says. So how does that happen? Now, whosoever has lifted any weights know very well that when you lift weight, heavy weight, you do the deep inhalation and hold. This is the way you do it, right? You just, you cannot be, you cannot exhale and hold. You have to inhale very heavily and, and then you lift it. Suddenly you get this, this abdominal muscles become tight. And that is the tight means this portion of Manipura Chakra gets activated now. And that is the power that you are getting. That is Vishnu Chakra actually. They call it Manipura Chakra is called Vishnu Chakra. So uh, 
which is Vishnu is nothing but Ram only, and Ram is nothing but consciousness. So that's the that is the gateway uh, to to consciousness. Okay, so when you do this, that is exactly what you do. You inhale and hold. And I'm uh, I'm sure you 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 have seen Hanumanji like that. So he must have done the same thing. I am any outer uh, action which requires tremendous strength is only possible when you do deep inhalation and hold. Okay. And uh, Hanumanji must have done the same thing. I think he must have did one breath and that's it. He went all the way to Lanka with with that mountain. So. So all outer work requires you to inhale deeply and hold. Okay. So whatever yoga sun that we are uh, we are doing, all the backward bends, right? All the backward bend like that. Wherever you do, uh, so you always inhale wherever you do backward bend. Bhujangasan, all the several asans are there, and Anjaneyasan is one of the most uh, fascinating asans. I am really, really happy about the person who visualized Hanumanji like this. And that's exactly why his asana is known as Anjane Asana, where you you get all your six, seven, seven chakras activated in one go. That's the real beauty of Anjane Asana, right? So to strengthen the inner mechanism, now this was about the external actions which require tremendous strength. You have to inhale and hold. But what about the exhale and hold? What happens? Inner mechanisms. So I am going to share with you some, uh, uh, this Mahamudra is one of the ultimate uh, Kriya Yoga uh, posture in which three locks, the, the Vishuddhi lock, Manipura lock and Muladhar lock. Three happen simultaneously after you exhale. So you take inner breath, inhale it big time and exhale, completely exhale, and then you keep bending. So when you bend, more and more air goes out from your nose. And then what you do, you touch your uh, your head to the knees, which means even more tight. And then you hold, uh, give the lock, all the three lock, Vishuddhi lock, Manipura lock, and Muladhar lock. This is how you do this. And then there is another one, after doing the left and the right, and then you sit down in Padmasan, and you touch your forehead to the floor and again do the lock after exhaling. This is gives you tremendous inner uh, rejuvenation. Inner body rejuvenation happens and I'll tell you and there are so many scientific papers that have come up with a trans now what is what, during this process what happens is you exhale and hold which means and uh, I mean we can uh, we can do 40 second hold. Uh, I, I could do that much, uh, but it takes a while to practice that, to get to that point. But 20 seconds, 10 seconds, whatever is possible, this it is, it is good. So gradually it becomes like that. What it does is, how does that help you? Uh, in, uh, exhalation and hold, the or biocumbux in our inner body work. So I'm going to share with you some several papers in which the the... Nishesh Rechika means, Nishesh means uh, completely exhale and Rechika means hold, right? Uh, completely uh, exhalation and hold. And what does that do? It creates intermittent hypoxia. Intermittent hypoxia means less oxygen in the blood. Little, just a little bit of carbon dioxide more. That's what is hypoxia, right? Now, hypoxia is known to regulate hematopoietic stem cell niche. Hematopoietic, don't worry, worry about this complex name. Hematopoietic means that that inside the bone marrow, in the hollow of the bone, that place, there are some cells which are producing blood throughout our body, right? So that particular niche gets activated by what? Hypoxia. And what is causing, what is caused by, uh, which causes hypoxia? The X. Exhalation and hold causes hypoxia, which transient hypoxia, which makes blood. Blood means RBC, WBC, and the lymph, uh, the lymphat. Uh, sorry, um, um, immune cells, T cells, B cell that fight the the infection, the bacteria, and the viruses, the COVID, and all that stuff. Right? It it is the one which fights the immune cells, as, as you say that in the 
in the hematopoietic stem cell niche inside the bone marrow, which means the blood producing area in the bone marrow has this uh, immune cell progenitor sitting there, which gets activated and they get to form uh, all these kind of cells. I'm not going to uh, describe all this, but just to let you know that this is exactly what happens. Now with functional hypoxia, what happens is also drives neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is something, let's say if you have got damage in your uh, speech center. So how does speech, once, once damaged, how do you recover back? So in the meantime, the area next to it gets the function taken over. The speech function is taken over by the adjacent uh, brain area, right? So that is called neuroplasticity. But in the meantime, what happened? New, neurogen new uh, neurogenesis means new brain cells are formed. So that new, the lost brain cells are recovered back again and the function will be transferred back to them. This is the beauty of our system. And what causes hypoxia? Exhalation and hold. So hypoxia causes to uh, release of several um, hypoxia inducing factors, which are no, which are known to be very neuroprotective agent in Alzheimer's disease. This is a very fantastic uh, review article I found, and uh, it is what how neuroprotection happens because of those hypoxia inducing factors is amazing. Uh, and that hypoxia inducing factor is created by what? Created by exhalation and hold. Remember that. So also it forms bones. Chondrogenesis is nothing but bones. So the bone density, it has been shown this. If 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 the PCO2 means partial concentration of partial concentration of oxygen is higher, then the bone density is 22. Uh, uh, it, it, it is lower. But if it is if it is lesser oxygen, then it is more, right? That's what it is. Now, hypoxia also makes cardiomyocytes. Cardiomyocytes in the muscles, those muscles, th those cells which make the muscles of the heart. Cardiomyocytes. So myo means muscle, sites means the, those cells which make the muscles of the heart, right? That's what it is. So it also makes that. So no wonder uh, um, this this uh, this uh, the exhalation and hold is so fantastic. This, uh, so I'm going to give you a, a one slide summary of all the so-called good functions that I, uh, that exhalation and hold does is this. So exhalation and hold increases. In there is a transient hypoxia, which means transient increase in the blood carbon dioxide level, right? That blood carbon dioxide level triggers uh, uh, some hematopoietic stem cell niche and causes new blood cells and immune cells to be formed. Then it promotes also uh, neuroplasticity, which means if the brain cells, some of the areas of the brain is kind of dead or something, so the lost function of that area is taken over by the adjacent uh, uh, thing, uh, adjacent brain area. And also it causes neurogenesis and new uh, brain cells are formed. And it also aff aff uh, affords um, neuroprotection, right? And then it also promotes chondrogenesis, meaning new bone formation and heart muscle formation. So these are the breast, these are the some of the things that has science has finally proven beyond shadow of doubt. And that's why the, the whole idea of yogic neuroscience means how our yoga does what so many million years ago they have figured out what what uh, what this kind of things do. And no wonder they, they were promoting uh, ancient rishis, stress the importance of going to Amarnath, Badrinath and Kedarnath Yatra. Why did they do that? Have you ever asked this question? It is not God. I mean, God is it's okay. Um but it is for your own benefit because what has happened now you have got the God here inside here. If you have brought Hanumanji as in you, in you, the breath is Hanumanji in you, how is that breath helping you is important. The Rishi said, okay, since you have faith in God, okay, go ahead and find God there. But what actually it does was so it old age, after 60 people uh, have uh, several people fall 
right? Some several people have low immune system. They get con infected with uh, some disease. Some happens. Something happens. Heart challenge happens. Immune function is bad. Uh, um, bones, uh, bone density, brittle bones happens. So what they do is says, okay, even though you are sixty years old, go to Badrinath. What happens when you come back? The, you do, you don't have any of these challenges. This is the best part. Why? Because there is. By default, there is less oxygen there. By default. So less oxygen means more carbon dioxide in your breath. So you automatically will inhale deeply. But if you understand, if you have trained the way Hanuman Chalisa breathing is, the Chalisa way, you will get more mileage out of it because you will not uh, uh, just breathe shallow and deep. Deep and shallow is a bad idea. You have to deep hold, exhale, hold this is the right way so when you go there this is what they were basically wanting to you to to experience and come back home no complaint no backache no leg ache no no uh, cold cough nothing every no blood pressure also so this is what uh, they used to do and now you know very well why tulsidaji says this with such conviction na rog Hare sab pira japat nirantar hanumat bira jo yaha pade hanuman chalisa ho ese disa ki gori sa conviction look at the conviction nase rog hare sab pira sab everything all the pira uh, all the rogue. If you are suffering with stuff, go to Mount Everest. <laughs> I mean to say, I mean, go to Badrina and you'll be fine Come when you come back. So that's what it is all about. And it is it is confirmed that Shivji is 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 the witness to whatever his Tulsijaji is saying. To what is Tulsijaji is saying? Nase roga hare sabapira. Japat nirantar hanumatabha. What is Hanumanji? Japat nirantar means being aware of your breath. Inhalation, hold, exhalation, hold, inhalation, hold, exhalation, hold. This is what Japata Nirantara Hanumata Bira. Nice that uh, you all came to show uh, to this uh, uh, episode. And uh, please, 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 I really, really beg you to subscribe and share and 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 like this. This presentation, if you have thus far liked it, I hope you have liked it. And um, press the bell icon, right? And to be very honest with you, you are, there is something very exciting coming up next. And this is the next episode five. I'm just giving you just a brief teaser here. M most people know what is uh, Hanumanji. It also, he is also called Panchamukhi Hanumanji. But... Oh, Panchamukhi Hanumanji is outside. What about inside that breath? How does that breath, which is Hanumanji now in in our being, how that breath becomes five? Panch prana, right? How that transference happens? That's what we'll discuss next time. Thank you. Okay. There it is. Top share. Thank you. I really, really appreciate and look forward to seeing you in the next episode.